How can you get a job in Canada while you're there in India? If not the most asked question, this is certainly one of the most frequently asked questions. Whether I upload a YouTube video, whether I'm there in a Facebook group, whether I am live on YouTube, I have been asked this question several times. So I thought, why not make a detailed video about it so that whenever anyone asks me these questions again, I'll just copy paste the link of this video and they'll get their answer. Now we're talking just about India here, but we mean that how can you get a job in Canada while you're there in your home country. So if you want to know the details, if you want to know the, some tips and tricks as well, do watch this video till the end because this video is going to be very helpful for many people out there. Okay, now before we discuss about the tips and the tricks, let's discuss the possibilities of you getting a job in Canada while you're there in your home country like India. Okay, let me get this thing very straight. It is very, very, very difficult to get a job in Canada while you're there in your home country. Now, why I'm saying that, especially after COVID, there's so much unemployment all over the world. Canada is no exception. If there are so many people unemployed in Canada, the chances of you getting the job while you're there in India would be even lesser. But when I'm saying that chance is lower, it's definitely not impossible. I'm not trying to demotivate anyone. I'm just trying to tell you the real scenario. Okay, now there are primarily two different kinds of categories that I want to talk here. Number one, all those people who haven't got any work permit, uh, they're just waiting to get a job offer so that maybe they can increase their points in the express entry system. Maybe they can come here and they can start working here and then apply for their PR. The second category of the people is all of those people who have got the confirmation of permanent residence. Okay, so for all of those people who haven't got the legal status to work in Canada, guys, I don't want to crush your hopes, but still, it's very important to tell you the reality. It's very, very, very difficult to actually get a job while you're there in your home country like India. To apply a job in a reputed organization, you would probably go to their website, maybe go to LinkedIn or maybe go to any job sites and you'll try to apply your um, job online to their portal. But when you go to their career portal, most probably you'd see a question being asked that if you're actually legally permitted to work in Canada. Now, when you select no, most probably they'll straight away tell you that they can't even proceed with the assessment for the job interview because you're not legally allowed to work in Canada. But still, I would like to say that it is not impossible. I know a couple of people who actually made it possible. So it is possible, but it is very rare that you find such kind of examples. So who can actually find a job? Basically someone who has got a very niche skill. Maybe you know something that very few number of people around the world actually know. Maybe your skill is like that. Just for example, maybe there's a new tool launched in, uh, in IT industry and not many people around the world actually know about it. Not many people know how to use that tool. Not many people know how to uh, develop that tool or how to do the maintenance of that tool. And if you are one of them, then you might have a chance. So ask it to yourself that, are you good enough? Do you have such a niche skill? If yes, then there are chances that you can actually crack a job. But there's one more roadblock in that journey. Something known as LMIA or Labor Market Impact Assessment. Basically to offer any job to a person outside of Canada, it's very important for the employer to prove that, that they were not able to find a person in Canada with those skills. And when the employer actually proves that, then they are able to get that LMIA letter. That is very important. Now, many people actually get fake job offer letters. I see it all the time. People asking about it. I've got this job offer letter. Is this valid? Is this a fake one? Is this a real one? We don't know. I made a video specifically about it. I'll provide a link to that video in this description box below. You can check that out. You can see there are so many mistakes through which can I actually find out that if that job uh, offer letter is valid or a fake one. 
Now it is very important to note that there might be people who might be offering you LMIA letter with a job offer and they might be asking for a hefty amount of money. Guys, do not fall into that trap. It's very difficult. There are so many scams going all around Canada. People come out with new tricks and this is a very old trick in the book. Do not fall for that trap. Do not ever pay for any job offer or if the person actually says that they'll give you the LMIA later as well. Okay, now before we discuss those tips and tricks that will help you find a job in Canada while you're there in your home country, I want to give a huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people offering thousands of inspiring classes on topics including design, photography, web development, marketing, animation, creative writing, and the classes on so many other topics as well. Since the last few weeks, I'm developing this new skills of travel photography, not just through the DSLR camera, but also through my phone as well. And I've been learning these skills through the classes given by Dan Rubin. I love the way he explains all the small aspects of travel photography. So if you have that creative knack inside you, I'll definitely recommend you going to Skillshare and checking out their classes. I'll provide a link in the description box below. The first thousand subscribers to click on that link will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can try it for free and explore your creativity. Okay, now talking about the second category of people who have got the confirmation of permanent residence and they're legally allowed to work in Canada after they land. So they have a great opportunity. Yes, it would still be difficult for you to actually find a job while you're there in India, but because you have the biggest uh, roadblock cleared away from your path, it is still possible and there are good chances that you can actually crack a job. I actually know few more people, uh, at least five of them who have cracked the job after getting the confirmation of permanent residence while they were in India. So what are the tips and the tricks so that you can actually get a job offer? Now actually getting the job offer will depend on your capability but at least you can get the interview calls or the assessment calls while you're there in your home country and then obviously depends on your capability if you're able to clear that or not. Number one, it's about the virtual number. Number two, it's about making the right resume. Number three, it's about the communication skills and number four, it's about making the right connections. All four are very important. First one is basically a trick and the rest ones are more of the tips that you should actually do. So what is a virtual number? Basically, it's a Canadian phone number that starts with plus one ISD code. So let's say that I am the person who is reviewing some resumes or profiles for a particular job position. Now, when I see that, okay, out of the 10 profiles that I've picked, Two people are there in India I would feel that okay why to actually talk to those people they're in different time zones um, I don't know if they're they would be able to come to Canada anytime soon or not all those questions would come to my mind and I might filter them out and only focus on those ones who are there in Canada so to avoid that situation what you can do is that you can actually purchase a Canadian virtual number so that you can write your Canadian number in the resume those services are very cheap nowadays you can actually find a number for uh, five dollars or ten dollars for a month time so it is very cheap totally worth it now i'm not saying that they should lie to your interviewer that you're in canada and uh, you can work for the company but you should tell them the right picture that you are in your home country but you are willing to come to Canada anytime soon as soon as you get the job and anyways you are planning to come to Canada in the next few weeks or next couple of months so you'll be there sometime very soon but the Canadian virtual number would increase that probability of your profile or your resume getting shortlisted now talking about resume it brings me down to the next point of writing the resume guys it's very very important to write the resume in the Canadian format now you can go on to Google and find many websites which will help you to write the resumes in the Canadian formats. Uh, basically, you have to be very cautious when you write the resumes. Many times I've seen the resumes are like 
four pages, five pages, six pages in length. You have to be up to the point. You have to mark very important points there. Your main jobs and responsibilities, your education, your qualifications, your certifications that are actually relevant to the job you're applying for. And also nowadays profiles are picked through some automated systems. So you should include some keywords in your resumes so that your profile gets picked by those systems when it gets searched for a particular job. Okay, now let's assume that you've got the interview call. Now, apart from the technical knowledge that you should have, what's very important is to have the right communication skills. Your communication skills of English should be apt, should be up to the mark of the interviewer's standards. Now, because you're there in your home country, and even if you're there in Canada at this point of time, most of the job interviews are being done virtually. So you should practice interviewing in front of the camera. Maybe you should try and pick up your camera, maybe your mobile and try and record yourself, try and find out your flaws. Because when those interviews actually happen, you would be good enough, you'd be refined enough or polished enough so that you don't face all of those nervousness inside you when you're facing the camera for the first time. And here I want to point out one very special point about the French language. Now I'm not talking about you learning the French language up to a competitive level that you can score certain points in TEF or TCF exam. But if just in case, if you have time, if it is possible for you to understand and speak French, that would be an added advantage in your resume. Because many jobs nowadays actually ask for such people who know French. Because Canada is a bilingual country, English and French are both spoken in Canada. If you know French, that would definitely be an upper edge over many other candidates who are there for that job profile. Okay, now coming over to the last point of making connections. Guys, I cannot emphasize more on this point that how making connections can help you in getting your first job here in Canada or maybe a second or third job also. Here they say that connections are everything. Of course, you should have the required knowledge, but if you have connections, if you have people in, working in different companies who can refer you for a particular job vacancy or requirement, there is nothing better. All those people who actually come through reference are actually given more priority over those people who actually apply through a job portal. So you should definitely concentrate on maybe improving your LinkedIn profile. Many, many companies nowadays actually choose LinkedIn to choose their right candidates for their job profiles or requirements. You can also make connections through LinkedIn. This is the most important part of being a part of such an important professional platform. You can make connections. You can make Canadian connections, people who are working there in Canadian companies. As I told you, if you can get a reference through an acquaintance uh, in their company for a particular job requirement, then there are high chances that you can at least get the interview call. And then after that, as I told you, it totally depends on your capability. All right, guys, so I really hope that information that I've shared in this video would help you clear that doubt from your mind. How difficult is it to find a job in Canada and what should be the tips and tricks that you should use to actually find a job in Canada while you're living in your home country. So thanks a lot for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you have any feedback, any comments, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like and share this video with your friends as well. Thanks again for watching this video.